Yes, people, you don't know. When you hear the voice, a Zane alongside the people's favorite. Why go on, Zane? Why well, would the energy RP? We are all the same energy right through the season, you know. Win, lose, or draw. Which is right. We have to stay committed and faithful. That is it. We are not going to jump ship no matter what. Yeah, people, as you can don't know, we are not in our usual happy mood. But we are not give up hope. But we just have to kick it off right away in the GRP because Arsenal blew a two-goal lead at West Ham's London Stadium. So we can say basically had the advantage over to Manchester City. Yeah. They, so back-to-back job points in the last, we they call it seven days. Yeah. Uh, so we came up against a really a relegation bone West Ham team. And we play magnificent football in the first 10 minutes. But a football game is not win in the first 10 minutes. Um, as soon as we score that second goal by Odegaard, we pretty much take the we foot off the gas pedal. And we got way lay back and just pretty much not playing and pressing. We, we didn't have that killer instinct. Yeah, we need that, that killer it. instinct. And mm -hmm. then... Surprisingly, again, another senior player made an error and it led to Gabriel um, well, coming to down forward. I've seen various footage um, of, of that foul and, it, and they were saying it, it, it's not a penalty. But, but regardless, it was party error that led to that, um, to that penalty. And yeah. <laughs> You see, the errors are, are creeping up in our defensive side of the game, which we need to eradicate. Yeah. And the two-goal thing, once we jump into a two-goal lead, we need to keep accelerating. Let's blow teams out the water because at the end of the day, goal difference may, may be very important. And, and they should. And they should. And a couple of minutes after par party made that error, he picked up a yellow card and his game totally changed from there. Yeah, because you could see he, he he pulled out a tackles, you know. He he wasn't trying to get another yellow to get a red and then a suspension. Yeah. I think this was one of party's poorest games. I think it was one of the poor, poorest games for Arsenal in general because you went from playing your magnificent football um, to blowing the team out of the park, then after that, you just take your foot out of the gas pedal. Yeah, true. I, I mean, it's like deja vu all over again. Yeah, and then we were the one that was you now struggling um, to, 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 to stay alive in that match when um, a slew of West Ham attack um, kept coming. It just kept coming. just kept coming after um, they come after come and we were just hanging, hanging, hanging on there for our dear life. The thing is, I can say wholeheartedly, it shows today we really miss Saliba. Yes, we did because Holding is not that kind of defender like a Saliba. Um, Holding is more like an old fashioned um, defender. Root. And, yeah, yeah, yeah root the ball. clear it yeah, out. Clear out the ball. And it, it, it kind of limits our game as well because he lacked PS, yes, so he will not. Stepped up and played that high line and help out the attack. True. And there were many occasions today that when he got the ball, rather than just make that pass, he chose the option of clearing it. And then when Sam get the ball and they just recycle that attack again. And nine out of ten, you know, that option of just making a simple pass is the best option. But where it's not part of his game, it's something that he definitely has to work on. Yeah, it's something that he has to work on. And I'm glad you mentioned just making a simple pass. That wasn't there today. Well, that, that was there in the first 10 minutes. But right. after that, um, it, the, the simple pass just looked impossible. We start to play the bar rather slow. And the minute, the minute when, we, when we speed up the, the passing, you realize that it's starting to create chances. Now, my thing is, you think um, Saka is tired or is it just a bit of frustration because Saka has been missing for a while now? You know? 
Um, I, I, I just think Saka just need to, to, to get a, a, a grip on things. Um, um, he, he's used to this by now. He's used to players, um, tag team, tag team in up and where he had three players on him. The, the reality is the end that we all know what's going on with, with, with Saka and his um, new contract, right? His team is right. pushing for him to be one of the highest paid players at Arsenal. Um, if you're going to be the highest paid player at Arsenal, now we're not saying he doesn't deserve it because he has, since last season, even the previous season, he was, he's one of our uh, most outstanding players. True. You are the man. And with you being the man, you have to step up and you have to deliver. Yeah, you definitely have to show your class as being the man. And today, he didn't show his class. And no. in Liverpool match, he didn't show his class as well. Missing again. And again. Now, the, the game again, Southampton Friday. Now, you have to go and step up now and show us what Saka can do. We know what he can do. And to be, and to be world class, you have to be ruthless. And I think that's what I'm missing from Saka game. He's just too nice out there. Yeah, that is it. That is it. Yeah, you need that bit of ruthlessness, that bit of aggression in your yeah. game. But I think at the end of the day, well done to West Ham. You know, we didn't drop any, uh, we dropped two points, but it's still not doom and gloom as some fans and rivals want to make it out. No. It's still in our hands because the points are better than games in hand. Yes, I, I know that today, um, two points drop, we feel like a loss. But if we beat Sonta, Sultan Command Friday, that put us up by seven points. Right. Um, again, the, the, how this is going right now, this is a game of mentality. Who has a better mentality will win this title. Definitely, definitely. But and the small margin of inches. And if we can eradicate those little mistakes in our games and just finish off team, we can lift the title at the end of the season. Definitely. I mean, we've been we've been phenomenal so far. So let's not let's not drop that. Let's pick up back again, come Southampton, and just push for this for the title. Simple as that. But well done to West Ham still, because now they're up to 15th you now. That's four points off the bottom, and they're hoping to survive. And that, and that's what we keep saying um, week in, that you just need to get a series of wins, and that series of wins just push you. Up. And yeah. that's what it did for West Ham. Credit, credit to them, because coming from two goals down is not an easy task, especially in front of your own crowd. And when they scroll, is pretty much on your back. On your back, yeah. And especially, we know that they play on Friday. And majority of the players that was that were playing today, they were playing Thursday. Um, sorry about that. They were, they were playing in the conference league Thursday. So it was, compared to us, who had a, a week race, um, with some had to, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So their turnaround was rather short. And they came out and they could have gotten now, could have gotten uh, uh, the win. At uh, one point, I believe it was Anthony who hit the ball on the post. Yeah, they definitely could have got the win. But, you know, moving away from Arsenal and West Ham, because our rivals, if we can call them that, Man City, they ease past Leicester. I mean, it was a foregone formality in 20 minutes. Yeah. Alan is now equal with the Premier League's goal record. And that he only played in, that 45 was, that was, minutes. That was never in any doubt. Um, we, we, know that, we know the kind of player Alan is when he was at Borussia Um The evidence was clear. And he's playing in a formidable Manchester City team. Exactly. Yeah. And the scary thing is he can only get better. That's it. This is his first season. And he has that amount of goal. Um, like I said, this was a re routine win. Leicester City made things rather easy for City. Um, yeah. I said last week, well, I said that I have Leicester going um, down. And in, in, in yesterday match, they didn't give me any reassurance to, to, to see them escaping down the relegation battle. 
None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Now, Haaland is what? And 32 goals in the Premier League? Mm -hmm. He's almost close to breaking the record for most goals per season, which is held by Andy Kola, Alan Shearer. He's a monster. Yeah, man, definitely. The great cyborg. And, and, he, and he makes the, 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 the game look easy. So easy. But as we talk about the game look easy, did you see the drama at White Hart Lane as Bournemouth come from behind and beat Spurs? And I think that that's the game of the weekend for me because we all have Spurs winning this match. I mean, comfortable. Comfortable. This was a game where you would think the like of Harry Kane would have just blown um, Bournemouth out of the, out of the park. The um, Bournemouth, the visiting team, it would seem like they were at home. Oh, yes. I mean, every time Spurs took the lead, they fought back. Right, this after is sudden, mm -hmm. after sudden score, they fought back, took the lead. You know, Spurs start to salvage the point, but I think it was what the last kick of the game. Yes, mm -hmm. that was late drama, man. And no, this just opened a window of possibility for the the top four because they have Manchester yeah. United on fifty nine points. They won their game today. They have Newcastle on fifty six. There's there there is Tottenham now on 53, and then the informed team West Ham is in sixth position on 50. You mean Aston Villa. Aston Villa, yeah. My apologies. Yeah. Aston Villa. And this is the thing with Tottenham. They are too inconsistent. Very. And can't Very seem to get the job done at time. Because um this was a more more team that pushed us as well. Yes. Yeah, this they team push us as well. This team's fighting for survival you know, because they, they're up they to are. 14 right they're now. They're up to 14 right now. And is it a case where they will um slip back into the into the relegation um fight? Um possibly not. Um the game against West Sam will be a pretty interesting one. Yeah. See, I had more going down, but the fight they are showing right now, it's really hard to call. That, that, win, that win is a big win against Tottenham. Yeah, man. Massive, massive win. And like you said, you know, fifth place is under threat because Tottenham are slipping out of Champions League and Villa are now right behind them. Yeah, Villa, Villa is the inform team and even Newcastle, they, they, they self are not in the, the, that good run of form as well. Right. No, a team that's not in any run of farm. Chelsea. Right? When Chelsea sacked Tuchel and brought in Potter, we thought they were working on a project. Agree. Right? Then that project got scrapped and they bring in Frank Lampard. And even under Frank Lampard, they are still winless. And they weren't just beaten by Brighton this weekend. You know? They were absolutely outclassed. So right. it, it, it was a, a, a series of just stupidity um, yes. from Chelsea owner. This is, this, this is what Chelsea fans wanted because when the club was up for grabs, meaning that it was up for sale, they wanted that a owner to come in and to spend. Yes. And, splash that, the cash. and that they did. But they splashed in the cash without direction. Cash. That, that 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 is pretty pretty much what they do, you know. Like you said, you know, they are pretty much just throwing everything at the wall and see what sticks. And right now, nothing is sticking. Yeah. Um, they with these influx of new players, it's just maybe next season things will get better for them. And you see, the thing is as well, after they took the lead, right? We thought they would step it up a bit, but their football never changed. Brian yeah, still yeah. dominated and got chance after chance. And listeners, the scary thing is, you know, this was Brighton's first ever win at Stanford Bridge. Yeah. That's um, how poor Chelsea were. Brighton is a team that right now that is um, fighting to get a European spot. And they have been causing a lot of troubles for 
pretty much every team in the league. Um, yeah. Chelsea, the best they can do is focus on Champions League, which that in itself is, is another hard task. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Remember last week I said if Chelsea win Champions League, Southampton can escape relegation. Yeah, they, because um, to come from a two-goal de deficit, um, Real Madrid. Uh, Real Madrid. It, it's it's going to be a hard task. Yeah, a hard task. Well, Real Madrid coming to them. That is the one thing that Chelsea has going for them, because we know the bridge will be bouncing on the night. I mean, they have to because what other choice they have? Yeah, true. None. They have nothing mm -hmm. to play for in the league apart from pride. This is the one trophy that they have to fight for. And this is the one who back into the Champions League because if they miss... Well, they're not finishing in top four. That, that is clear. Yeah, that is definitely clear. That ship and, has sealed. And if, and if they, and if they, can, if they get knocked out of the Champions League, then... Chelsea will be out of Europe next season, or possibly in Europe at least. If, if they can't make it in if Europe. If they can't league. make it, yeah, exactly. If they can't make it. Or a possible conference league. But a next team that looks like they want to slip out of Europe totally, Brentford. Because their hopes of Europe, you know, is almost over because this is now their third straight loss. Getting the yeah. Wolves team. Yeah, Brentford running out of steam, and I am rather surprised by this. Yeah. Yeah, they are definitely running out of steam. I thought the way Tony was going and to how they were defending, yeah. I didn't see them running out of steam like this, honestly. Um it is it's there, it's the keeper, is the one player that one player that is keeping them from embarrassment. Raya, yes, definitely. Definitely. Apart agree. from that, um, Brentford just look like a, a team athlete that just do have a clue of what they're doing. I think what happened, you know, they, they basically bit off a bit more than they can show. Because at one point, they were what? Six and seven with Brighton? Yes, and now they're ninth. Now they're ninth. One but, point ahead of Fulham. But the, 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 the situation that exists right now is that Tony is there, so you have to make full use of Tony. True. True. Regardless because, of the ban looming or... Yeah. You have to make use of Tony. Because now you're, you're, you're in a ninth position now. I mean, where yes. will you finish come the end of the season? You can easily just slip out of the top 10. True. True. The good thing is, it's not too late. And every end of the table is tight. Yeah, every end of the, ta um, the table is tight. They, 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 can, they can bounce back. Um, their next game is at home to Aston Villa. That, that will be spicy. Yeah, that's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a really tough game. But as for Wolves, though, you know, Wolves are almost safe because now they are seven points away from the bottom three. I mean, when Diego Costa turn up and score, you only can yeah. be safe. Yeah. I mean, Wolves was a team that was almost at the foot of the table at one point in a month. Yeah, and credit to them. They are um, finding their footing. They are finding their bite again. Um, yeah. They are winning. They are scoring. Yeah. And they are moving on the table. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Wolves will definitely be safe. Definitely. But, you know, two other teams that are definitely safe. Crystal Palace and Fulham, they had basically routine wins over Southampton and Everton. Respectfully. Respectfully. Yeah. Um we didn't I didn't see Fulham, I didn't see Everton creating any upset right here. Um, no. We 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 know the, the struggles Everton has been facing since the start of the season. Okay, we even said it previous season or the previous season. And that this, has always been just trying to win games. The, the sad thing and the big surprise was that Everton were at, were at home and Fulham off late without Mitrovic had found it hard to score goals. But And Everton were defending a little bit better. But and, this, and this, this is where... Fulham they, ran riot. And this is where 
the Daniel James um, step up. I even forget yeah. about this player. So did I, to be honest. So did yeah. I. He stepped up and he, and he delivered. And well, it, it was a good all round um, performance by the, the Fulham team. I mean, and as far as Southampton goes, what more can there be said? I mean, it's um, just. Like, like I said, you know, I'm sure of this team going down. Yeah. Um, let's just hope Friday, Arsenal can just add a, another nail in their coffin. Yeah, definitely, because um, we need the three points more than they Yeah, do. we need the three points. Southampton uh, is just uh, been disappointing since the season start. Yeah. And Crystal Palace um, went up there and they did their job. I mean, this is what? Three from three for Rye? Right? Yeah, from Rye. Right. And Eze is getting those goals. Um, we are no Rye. Right. He has this great um, ability with man management and he's getting the best out of these players. No, I still don't, I still don't believe he's the long-term fix. No, no, because look at it again. Where are Crystal Palace right now? They're still in 12. They're still in 12 position, but we, we know, I know we're getting at because, like I said, and I am in agreement with you, when they fire Patrick Beer at Crystal Palace was came, their fixtures were difficult. Yes. The sides that they came up against, you are expect the um them to lose. Yes. Maybe it was in the manner of how they lost those match why they fire Patrick Beer. But we all anticipated when that bad run ended, he would have picked up points of these teams. E exactly. Exactly. So, so I still believe it was just a press of the panic button. Yes. My only question is still, you know, why wasn't Vera playing Eze? Because we see from um, Rai come in and Eze started playing, he's been either scoring or assisting. Well, then, no, that is the question you now where we need to look at Patrick Vera and no one said maybe you should have played it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because but, since he has come in, he hasn't put a foot wrong. No, not a foot wrong. This is what? Two, uh, two goals in this weekend. Yeah, and we are know of his and we are know of his, his capability. Um we are know of his capability. He's yeah, a man. talented player. Talented player. Very talented um player. Um it it I think Lakanga he got a game, he came on as a sub. Yeah. And he, he looks okay. Um, he's going to need more, more game time. But with, like I said, um, Crystal Palace objective right now is just to finish strong and not to do much of an experiment. I have Crystal Palace finishing 12. I mean, pretty much seen that they're just going to be at 12. Yeah, one. Unless they and, pass Chelsea still in And that was our... That, if if I'm not mistaken, that was one of our predictions for Crystal Palace at the beginning of the season that they yep. will finish somewhere finish around 12. the 10th or 12th position. Yeah, definitely. The biggest surprises have been Brighton and, and Brentford and Fulham. And Fulham, yeah. We didn't expect um, the likes, especially at Fulham, to, to, to play well. So, I mean, come on. Who saw Fulham above Chelsea? No, this Premier League season. But then again, we didn't see Chelsea being this poor. True. <laughs> that is true. But a, a team and a man that's on top form, Aston Villa. Hey, since Emery has come in, you know, right? Emery is basically a magician over there because when he took charge from Steven Gerrard, he moved them from lower mid table, like lower table. And now they are pushing for a Champion League spot. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember seeing Aston Villa in the Champions League. I know they've won it before, and that was before my time. Yes, that was before, way before our time. Aston Villa, if they make the Champions League, Emery has definitely put his hat, his name in the hat for a manager of the season. We we know of Emery capabilities. Yeah, we know this is a this is a manager that does not miss out on European football. 
And this is a manager that is capable of managing big teams. Oh, definitely. definitely. And, it, and this is a manager that um, is tactical. He knows to get the best out of players. They, they, his time at Arsenal was just a little, we call it, blemish. Yes. Where things didn't go on his way. And there was a lot going on there as well because... Um, at that time, what was his name? The that, Ozil Saga. There was the Ozil Saga, but there was that the German guy that was head of recruitment. Can't even remember his name right now. Yes, yes, and, yes. And he left. Um, there see there was well, from what reports were saying there, there was a clash because the players that he was getting in, Emery didn't want. And you have to you have to get the players that the manager wants. That the manager as well. And things started to go downhill. Remember Emery, I would not stay in long on this flash, but remember Emery is the team. Remember Emery bring a, a Arsenal team to the to 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 a Europa European League final. Europa, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he's doing the same thing um with with this Aston Villa team. And like what I'm saying, what I'm even more surprised is that we know of Emery. Being that man that size, that team win 4 3, 2 3. Right yes. now, this it's, team is pretty much closing our team. Yeah, man, it, the defense has gotten way better. Got, gotten way better. So even Emery in, himself uh, is evolving where he's playing even uh, more defensively and his side is winning without even conceding goals. True. I mean, Villa are now up to six, you know, man. Like you said earlier, three behind Spurs, six behind Newcastle, and then Newcastle and Spurs play each other this coming yeah. weekend. And and the way they and the way they move past Crystal, they just simply move past Newcastle with ease. Yeah, man. Oh gosh, man. I mean, Newcastle was no threat to them, to be honest. Yeah. This. This victory, the 3-0 that they gave Newcastle, was the best I've seen Aston Villa play in a long while. Yeah, man of the match for me was um, Jacob Ramsey. Ra man yes. was brilliant. He was everywhere. He was also everywhere. Yeah, but, and our boy Watkins, hey, can't stop scoring. Hey, this is the best form of his career ever in a man. Man, there, is, there will be a big price on his end. Yeah, I... I I don't think Villa will let him go. And if they and let they him go, him. it's and they not going cheap. Yeah, I don't think they'll let him go, man. This, this man, even when he scored his first goal and it was ruled off for offside, it was, I think, a minute 30 before he scored again. Yeah. Um, Watkins just keep coming, coming, coming. You can only imagine Watkins in a better team. But like I said, Watkins will just need to stay fit. Yeah, yes. I mean, I think Leon Bailey is injured now. Yeah, Leon Bailey is injured, but um, to, to be fair to Leon Bailey, and I'm not taking any jobs at him, um, when he was fit, um, there was no justification of him being inside it, um, inside it, uh, well, at the, the starting 11. Yeah, no, de I definitely agree, definitely agree. He wasn't doing the job, but before we go still. Right, more ask the people them and you yourself. Right, so people just leave it in the comments. Right, JRP, what do you think? You think Arsenal can fend off City and win the Premier League? Yeah, yes, we, we can. Um, as Arsenal fans, we, we are disappointed today with the result, but yeah. at the same time, we can put in our we can put ourselves in a position where we think we might lose it. We have to have faith that we can still pull this up. We have, we have come too far to, to give up. Exactly. The ball is still in our court, right? Because if we can win against Southampton, no, that put us up to seven points, right? And then we march on to, to Manchester City. We have to we have to just not lose against Manchester City. That's, That's it. it. Just That's not it. lose against them. Whatever game we go down at the ETA and play, make sure that we come out with either point or three points. And three points is possible, man. And three points is possible. So that, that is it. 
that is it right there. If we can come out of, um, against Manchester City with something positive, then it is ours. Manchester City is a team that is on the hunting. You know? They yes. are hunting. And not because they are hunting doesn't mean that they themselves can't slip up. Exactly. Exactly. We, we fully agree that they are dangerous because you can see the side that is hunting is very dangerous right now. All right. So my next question is, I must say, fans, again, everybody listening, write, write it in the comments. Let us know. But JRP, with the season boiling down and mm -hmm. every end of the table so close, who you think will get top four? Um, well, like I said, um, for when, when we discussed this um, last game week, um, it didn't change much for me. I still have Arsenal winning. Still yeah. have, of course... Manchester City. City coming second, and like I said, third place, third to fourth place will be up for grabs between Manchester United, um, Newcastle, and I still believe um, Tottenham will be in the mix. But like I said, um, Newcastle and Tottenham will have to look over their shoulders because Aston Villa is right behind them. Yeah, yeah, I mean. What a story if Villa got fourth place. It it will be a story that will tell for the ages. But yeah. um as as it relates to Brighton, I think they will fall short. Yeah, yeah. Definitely maybe Europa League or Conference League though. Yeah. And they, they would earn it based on they, I think they should play in Europe because they deserve. Yeah, they definitely deserve it. All right. So with the bottom three constantly changing, have, have you changed your mind on the three teams getting relegated this season? It will still be Southampton. I can't see Southampton escaping. Um, Leicester for me uh, as well. And yeah. I am edging more to um, Nottingham Forest. As well. I think Everton will find a way to escape. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I had Bournemouth going down, but Bournemouth is showing way more fight than the three teams you mentioned. Yeah, um, Southampton, dead and buried. And if they manage a loss against Arsenal, um, I think that is it for them. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Now, this one is for the Chelsea fans. I want to know, <laughs> Chelsea fans, could Chelsea get dragged into the bottom half of the table? <laughs> no, well, seriously, because they're 11 in a month. Three well, above Crystal Palace and five above Wolves. Well, um, just being a football purist, um, if Chelsea don't get their act together, then yes, they can get pulled into that fight. Not the fight of relegation, but a fight right. of where it's between now 11 and possible 15 in, in that bridge right there. In yeah. that bridge, because yeah. they need to start finding something. Because like I said, what is Chelsea objective? What uh, what do they have to pay for, for the, the remainder of the season? Obviously, pride. Yeah, pride and believe it or not, the Champions League. Yeah, like I said, and that still comes down to pride as well. Because Real Madrid come to their turf, um, come Tuesday. Their only objective right there is to win any mean necessary. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That is it. It's simple as that. Sim one task. Win by all means. By all means necessary. And the remainder, um, the remainder of the games left in the league now, um, it's simple. They have to give their fans something to cheer for for the remainder of the season. No. Last, I, I know I said that was the last question, but one more question. I heard um, rumors of them wanting to fire Frank Lampard. You think that could be possible? That would be what? Four managers in one year? It, it is not impossible then, but what would be the point of firing Lam Frank Lampard? It yeah, that would, that would make another no decision that doesn't make any sense. But, I mean, it goes with the Chelsea motto this year. So And then Frank Lampard need to revaluate him himself as well because I think he need a break from football. 
I think he needs to go into the lower leagues and build his craft. I agree with that. I'll be, become an assistant. Learn from somebody. And, and, that, and, that, and that is what he sh should be doing because put, put, this, put in a scenario there. All right. Since you get in Frank Clapman, he's an EPA legend, he's a Chelsea legend. The manager that is coming, why not negotiate and say, hey, if you are coming, uh, put Lampard on your team. That is it. Put him on your that team. And let him gain some experience as well. Um, and he knows the club. Um, he knows the players. The players respect him. Um, you know Lampard play for the Chelsea badge. What better person to have um, in your backroom staff? Yeah. Yeah. But with that, people, you don't know. Zane and JRP are wishing a wonderful Sunday. As usual, we're asking everybody, smash the like button. Smash you, know you know them said the algorithm is not your friend, so turn on your notification bell. Yes, man. Yeah, share this with everybody. And, you know, let us know what you think. Think Arsenal can still win? You know, who you have going down? And... Can Chelsea get dragged into the bottom half of the table? Like usual, last of the real, I tell everybody, walk good. And good luck to you, Palaio. We out.